Hi, I'm Bill Johnson, an attorney of Wood Game Calls, and I've been working on this new uh, open read elk bugle for a couple years now, and I'm finally getting the chance to uh, make this YouTube video of it, and you'll notice I'm really not the best guy on camera, but that's what you get. Um, so this is modeled after all of my other elk calls. I'm using the open read style. Uh, it is focused on having the wood up, so we're using the hard palate of your mouth, roof of your mouth, to hold the wood solid. Uh, and to use your uh, lower, uh, the softer palate of your mouth, your lower lip, to do all the note adjusting, just like all the rest of my uh, elk calls. Now this has really uh, started targeting uh, people who have uh, dentures, false teeth, uh, bridges and stuff who, uh, who can't really use other calls. And it's also targeted roughly about 60% of the uh, guys elk hunting who really have a hard time using the diaphragm. In all the seminars I've done over the last uh, 10 years of, of making calls, I'm finding that uh, 50 to 60 percent of the guys out there either have the gag reflex that gets them or what I call the puke button. Uh, you get that diaphragm in your mouth and you just cannot handle it. Uh, saliva builds up, you spit it out on the ground, you start gagging, puking, and that always happens at the worst possible time. And if you know you have that, then you're kind of stuck with the uh, little plastic thing. You stick the diaphragm in and you flip the case over it and you blow into it and maybe it's in right and not and it squeals and screeches and doesn't work right. You get the brown cap, the blue cap thing, and you put caps on it and you blow it and, and it still buzzes your mouth. So you're, you end up trying to do something that you really can't become good at. So I went after this bugle uh, aiming at that particular group of guys and gals out there elk hunting and you just, there isn't something for us. Uh, then, then I went after the fact that after being managing ranches for a long time and bow hunting elk for over 30 years, uh, that I listened to guys in camp and I listened to these other seminars and people talk about chasing the herd bull and sounding like a herd bull. And I'm going to tell you right now, after shooting a, quite a few elk myself and being around a lot of them on the ground, very few of them are shot because the person uh, hunting them made it sound like the herd bull. In fact, I've seen very few true herd bulls on the ground. Uh, most of them are satellite bulls. And the really herd bulls, once they hear something that's big and that they're not used to hearing, uh, they're off and they're out of there. All you're seeing is the rear end of cow, elk, and, and, and the bull crashing through the trees. So what I know for a fact from seeing it and being around it and doing it, sounding big and mean and nasty is not the best thing you can do. That plus my time in Estes Park down on the golf course and where there's elk all over the place, I can tell you that I don't want to bark like a spike. I don't want to scream like a spike. I don't want to do a herd chirp, uh, herding chirp to herd the herd up to run them. What I want to sound like is a soft mewy cow, an estrus cow, or I want to sound like that 3x3, three 4x4, three, 5x5, four five five, some 6x6, six six, screely young bulls that go out there sneaking around trying to sound and, and steal cows from a herd bull. So I designed this with that purpose. I designed it to be a little higher pitched and I designed it such that as you, let me zoom in on this for you, as you look at this call, yes it's a little bigger around than the, than, uh, the other calls, but it's modeled to be uh, less the slider like a lot of the open reads are and so on mine are. It's not so much a slider where you're doing this with your mouth it's more of a finding the spot on the mouthpiece where you can pinch your reed down and then use that lower lip, your covered up teeth on the lower lip, to put lip pressure on to take you from a medium sound to a high sound, sort of like this. And that's all just lip pressure. The reed is designed, I had this made for me, this special plastic, so that it doesn't require a whole lot of pressure. So there's not a lot of pressure here. Now on each one of these calls, I have done every single call to make sure they work by themselves out like this or in a tube. Now I'm going to show you the tube here in a minute. So this isn't designed so much to roll up and down your lip like you do on others, but it is designed to, to allow you to rock it back and forth, but don't slide it too much on your lip. Just let that lip pressure do the work for you. And we back out here just a bit. Now the, the beauty of this is it's easy and it's smooth. So in elk calling, you want to do that little, what I call, climb up and down the ladder. You want to go in the middle and come back down. 
A squealy, sneaky bull does not do a lot of heavy barking at the bottom or coughing, or the chuckle as some people call it, and they don't do a lot of growling at the front. However, on this call, if you make the err sound, you can get right into the call. You gotta be careful with that because that's more of a mature bull, but you can do that as well. So you're making a grr kind of coffee sound. And with your mouth on the bugle, and that reed vibration is gonna sound ex just exactly what you wanna do. So let's go, let's do that little kind of a front growl, which you really don't wanna do that very often, but let's do that. Now you can see that is a little growly at the front, up to the top, and right back down again. Now someone said, well, I want to be able to do that little coffee stuff at the backside. Well, on this call, it's easy to do because all you have to do is learn to make with your mouth and do a pop, 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 pop sound by leaving your lip in place, on the, the top lip in place, on the wood, like wherever you have it in here on this particular call, it's right here in the middle, by leaving it there and popping the bottom, no, it's not a goose call or a duck call. So it's easy. Now I'm just going to go up and down and do the pop at the bottom. So you can do that. You just have to remember. Take a little practice and you can soften that up and you can add more of the chesty throaty sound. So it sounds a little more like this. And so you get a little more into it. Remember, the more emotion you can put into it and the way you control your chest and the diaphragm you have inside of you and you put that air out, the more that this call is going to sound like that sneaky bull got slipping around trying to get to the herd. Now, a herd bull is going to hear that. And the reason that this is a little high is in the trees, that high note drops. The canopy of trees, the canopy of brush will drop down that note a little bit. If I make it too deep, as you should know if you're using a diaphragm collar, you know you got to be really careful with that. I try to use it when I'm using a diaphragm, I'm using a higher pitch diaphragm so that it stays high in the trees longer and then the tree is going to muffle a little bit. These are designed to let that sound go out as loud as you want to yell on it and scream on it and blow on it and then let the trees kind of kill that just a little bit. So now you have that. Now, now that's using this call just by itself. I've designed these so that they fit in a tube. Now I've got tubes and on my webpage I said I'm using other people's tubes. <clears throat> I was not going to get a grunt tube but I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and get grunt tubes so if you guys want to have a grunt tube uh, you can order the grunt tube at the time, you can order any time you want to, uh, it will fit this call. But what happens with the grunt tube on this, now you're extending the airflow. So now we have the same sounds in there. Now this is the demo call, I didn't put the brand new one in. So now I'm just going to do those same ones on this grunt tube. So you see a little bit now it sounds like, well that sounds a little uh, kind of tuby at the bottom. Again, when we get outside and you start doing that, You start seeing that real hollow sound at the bottom. Now let's shift it over to a different one. Now this is a brand new call I just finished up. I actually, there's a rack of them sitting right over here. I've got uh, three new ones sitting out here in front of me. I just put one of these in and we're going to see what it sounds like. Uh, just a, another tube I got. Uh, and this will be probably the style that I'm going to be offering as well. But So here, just a different tube. see it's pretty easy to take this little call, use it by itself, put it into a grunt tube. Um, I have taken one of these and I wrap um, what they call waterproof electrical tape. It's a covered of rubber back tape. And I've taken two wraps around this, uh, doubled it up a little bit, and I have actually stuffed it into one of the really heavy duty brown grunt tubes. I'm not a real fan of that. It doesn't seal up quite the way I'd like it to, but it works. 
So here you go, folks. This is an open reed elk bugle. Uh, yeah, and I suppose those goose hunters out there may want to try that, I'm sure. This is an open reed elk bugle. It's the first one I've seen in a long time, handmade by me. I have tried them all like this. I put them in the tube. Before I ship them, they are all this way. Again, find your spot in the middle where your lip does the work. Let the pressure take you up and down. Practice your little growl and put it on the call and try that pop, 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 pop sound at the back. Put it all together, practice. I sent a bunch of these out to the dealers. I had a couple of them call me back. They looked at it and said, wow, at first we didn't understand what you were doing. Then we've tried this. And now that they've tried it, most of them are, have called me back and are saying that they really want to keep this thing going. So here you go. The call is ready. And you can have your call today. Either use the website, you can go to your dealer and give me a call at 970-988-3490. Go to the website and order, give me a call, you can have it, you can come and get it, I'll send it to you, and it's ready for your use today. TrinityWoodenGame.com, TrinityWoodenGame.com, 970-988-3490.